But Greenwich is a funny old place. It's not, it's not a place of money. It's voted the worst place in England to live, and, which I think is bullshit. My name's Thomas Tergoose, and this is why I love Grimsby Town Football Club. Awesome. Cheers, mate. Uh, um, football's always been like a, an important thing to me. From when I was a kid, I played it all day, every day. I remember playing on, a, on an old bowling green near my dad's house. Where, you know, we'd finish school at three o'clock and we'd go there until it was dark. When I was, when I was younger, um, from the age of like seven or eight, because my brothers was Man United fans, I sort of followed United a lot. But then when I turned 13, like, I moved in with my dad and he was like, no, that's not. You're not being a United fan living here. You know, I'm always getting ripped with now because on, on my Wikipedia page, there's um, a picture of me in a Man United shirt and everyone's like, you're supposed to be a town fan. I'm like, but we've all been kids at one point, you know, and then I grew up and I came to my first game, me and my dad and my grandma as well. My grandma had a season ticket for like 70, 60 years, 70 years. On a personal level, like me and my dad have become so much closer because of this, you know. I always knew my dad, you know, he, he, he'd always be there on Christmases and stuff. And, and like my mum my passed away uh, when I was 13. But we say we started coming here and now me and my dad are best mates. You know, like I love my dad a bit. So that on a personal level, you know, Grimsby Town as a club, as all, you know, it's kind of brought us together. Oh, don't come in here, fucking hell, it's me in. <laughs> Blundell Park, um, yeah, is it's one of the oldest, uh, one of the oldest grounds in the country, um, and then the main stand is the only one that hasn't had anything done to it. You know, my grandma, your grandma, pretty much everyone's grandma has seen a game of football here, and it's the perfect stand to sit in on a Tuesday night when it's freezing behind you because the North Sea's only behind us. No doubt this is where Hasty praises the players because obviously don't make no mistakes. Um, well, some of the some of the amazing t players that have, uh, that have graced this room: Michael Reddy, uh, Ryan Bennett, obviously he plays for Norwich now in the Premiership. Uh, brilliant. Uh, Danny Coyne, Irish international. Welsh. Welsh. Don't put that bit in. Obviously, back in the eighties and nineties, Town was a big club. You know, there was, you know, there was beating the big sides. Um, whereas now, you know, it's kind of, it's a bit of a shame because you see all, you know, you see a lot of the old guys who, who sit here, you know, this guy, he's a number one fan, so he's obviously committed, this guy. I bet he's been sat here and he's, he's seen us play, you know, some big massive sides. And he's still here now, while we're in non-league. So, you know, that's kind of, the, the, the fans that we have got are a bit special. The away support for Towns always has been amazing, but it's getting better and better now, and it's become a bit of a thing around Grimsby for away days. Like my highlight of away games was Alfreton last season. Uh, everyone was talking about it around the town, you know, and everyone was saying we're going to do fancy dress. We're getting on the R7 train. Everyone in Grimsby knew that the R7 train was a train to be on, so it was kind of like a massive day, and like the whole town was involved, and it was just mental, like the, the most maddest day I've ever had in my life. The ground old summit, like like 1,800 or something like that, or 2,000. And Town had took like 1,500. I don't think there's any other club in the, in the league that can do that. Harry the Haddock, uh, the inflatable fish, you know, it was kind of generated back in the 80s when we played Wimbledon. Um, someone, you know, someone had just thought, well, we'll take an inflatable fish. And because obviously Grimsby's known for its fish, you know, there's a lot of factories, you know, you've got the best fish and chips, you know, you've got steels and clay forks, and then you've got the wide chippy. Without, without a chance, a lot of them are fish, you know, obviously we've got wee piss on your fish. We only sing when we're fishing, you know, it's just fish, 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 fish. But the fishing Grimsby is good. My best Grimsby town moment, Eastley, last season, the playoff semi-final, when we beat them 3-1. Just a buzz then, because we thought that that was our season. We thought we were finally gone up. And we should have done, with the way we played at Wembley a couple of weeks after. We should have gone up. But you know, the worst day, again, probably related to that, would be the Wembley trip home. When you wake up on the morning and you day out at Wembley and you're with all the lads and you're up at five at six in the morning or some of you aren't even into bed because you're so buzzing and you're excited. You get to Wembley, you're getting a boozer, the fans are all buzzing. But then obviously, you know, things went Bristol's way. Bastards. That walk back to the coach, leaving, leaving Wembley and walking back to the coach and thinking, we've got a four and a half hour coach journey home. 
you know, obviously a lot of thanks to last season after after we did lose at Wembley. You know, a lot of the fans created um, the trust. It was basically all the fans kind of come together to kind of generate a bit more money for the club. Um, you know, to to help in transfers. You know, to bring new players in and pay some wages and and, and all that. What did we set a target? Something like. 15 grand or 20 grand or something and then within like two weeks we'd got up to 100 grand and you know that just goes to show and Grimsby's not a rich place even if you donate five you know you're saving the club money somewhere you know somewhere down like even if it's down to printing a program you know you're still saving the money it's voted the worst place in England to live and which I think is bullshit um, and I think anyone who comes here and stays here um, and spends a bit of time here and comes to Blunder Park on a Saturday afternoon you know, they'll agree.